Overexertion injuries, like soft tissue injuries to the back, shoulders, knees, hips, and hands, are the number one most common cause of workplace injuries in the United States. Although initially this may seem surprising, when you think about it, either you or somebody else you've known probably has experienced an injury like this. The great news is you can prevent these debilitating, long-term injuries from ever occurring in the first place. I'm Rachel Walla with Ally Safety, and in today's video, we're going to go over three evidence-based ways you can prevent the injuries that take down more people than any other. Back injuries. But I'm not an expert in this area, so I've gone ahead and made us an appointment with a doctor of physical therapy who can help us out. Let's go. So now we're in the clinic to see Chantelle. Chantelle is a physical therapist with Workright Northwest, but don't be fooled by the polo. She's not just any physical therapist, she's actually an expert in injury prevention in a workplace setting. She started her career in the sports setting, working with both professional and aspiring to be professional athletes, so she knows a thing or two about soft tissue injuries to the body. Interestingly, she found injuries within the workplace setting are strikingly similar. It turns out, those who work in manual labor jobs have the same human bodies just like athletes. Although the cause of injury may be slightly different, the prevention and healing are the same. Watch out for that ball. <laughs> hey Chantel, nice to meet you. Well, it's nice to meet you too, Rachel. How can I help you? So we actually had some questions about how you can prevent those back injuries that seem to get so many people in their workplace setting. So if you move for a living, you can consider yourself an athlete. Industrial athletes are professional athletes as well. And if we can learn something from the professional athlete, we will find that prevention methods are exactly the same. There's a simple reason for every injury that happens. Are you ready for it? Yeah, I'm ready. An injury happens because the load that is placed on the body exceeds its tolerance. Well, that's kind of simple. <laughs> can I put in a quick plug here? Strengthening by far is our best prevention for injury. Strong is never wrong. Let's dive in. Let's take a quick look at the three top risk factors for a low back injury. One, repetitive heavy lifting. Two, frequent forward bending. And three, prolonged forward bending. What is repetitive heavy lifting? If we ask OSHA, it's over 50 pounds. However, it does not have to be heavy in order to stack on load to the spine. While it is important to limit heavy lifting, it's equally as important to monitor where that lifting is coming from. Take a look at this infographic. You can see how quickly a 20 pound lift can go from low risk to high risk. There's also no set number of repetitions. Heavy lifting can be different from individual to individual and from the distance it's lifted from the body. So we're gonna demonstrate what that infographic shows. And the infographic is a lift directly underneath us and then you see that wrist go up higher as we lift farther away. So we're gonna do the green or the good zone and then we're gonna lift a little bit farther, which is the yellow, and then into that red zone. So you're gonna come directly up to that, yep, and square up, and okay. just bend down and pick it up. So, so that yep. was easy. Yep. Yeah. And so this now is a 10 pound we're going... weight. You obviously don't have a lot of faith in me. <laughs> <laughs> this is as high as we have here. Okay. Okay. So you can go ahead and pick up that guy. Okay. Two hands. Two hands, Rachel. <laughs> come on. <laughs> there you go. Okay. okay. So did you feel just maybe slightly more yeah, effort I, with that? I actually felt like it was more effort, especially in the shoulders at that, at this length mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The shoulders away from your body. Yeah. Yep. So now if we go 36, which is going to be <laughs> about there. So, I mean, this seems almost silly. 
this this is silly. Okay. This is when I say like, why wouldn't you just step closer to it? But some people, sometimes people are just so involved in their task, they're just going. Okay. In general. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because you have to bend forward so far, right? Yeah, you're making me, I don't know if I could lift that concept. <laughs> If I get stuck in this position, will you help me? <laughs> I'm not a chiropractor. <laughs> okay, okay, so that really shows you how much the distance makes an impact on the total weight on your body. Yeah, okay. exactly. Not as much about the weight as it is about the distance. Okay. We can actually lift very heavy things if they're directly underneath our bodies. And you think about a, a weight lifter mm -hmm. or a strength trainer, right, lifting a bar. They are doing it right here. Yeah. Right underneath their body, like you lift it. Yeah, they're never oh, lifting out here. Yeah. Never. You know, this is kind of funny because it reminds me exactly of a crane graph to see how much weight a crane can actually pick. And so the further away that object is, the less the crane can lift. And so the closer it is, the heavier it can go. It's exactly the same for the exactly human body. The same. Yeah. Exactly. What's our prevention? Keep the load close. Number two, frequent forward bending. It's literally as simple as it sounds. This is the repetitive movement of the low back, which is a cause of overexertion injury. The great thing here is that it's often not necessary. It's just easy. When we talk about frequent forward bending, it's the everyday movement of bending forward to pick something up. How often do we store things at a lower level that could be stored at a higher level? How often are items tossed aside on the floor only to be picked up later. The floor is an abused storage surface. Instead of bending forward like this to get it, right? Right. You can do something like, crazy, I know this sounds crazy, you're gonna keep your back straight and you're going to lunge forward. Okay. Cause you're not, you're not bending forward. You're literally just, you're sinking straight down like a carousel and you're coming back up. Oh. So rather than the bend, it's bend and snap, it's kind of like, let's bring it low. Let's bring it low. Let's bring it low. Like a carousel pony. Or... I don't feel like a pony. I feel like I'm kind of creaking more like, well, they are wooden horses. So, <laughs> <laughs> so no bend and snap. It's going to be more of a uh, yes. low and slow. A low and slow. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The other way we can take this from golfers, is called a golfer's pickup. So for the golfer's pickup, one leg goes back. Like this? Very close, very close. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna tip forward. What you wanna do for all of these is try to keep the spine really straight. You gotta make sure nothing is behind you because you'll kick, kick someone straight behind you. <laughs> but that leg follows your body. So you're just literally gonna hinge forward and pick it up. Now, it's called a golfer's pickup because golfers have a golf club in their hand. This is oh. not an easy thing to do unless you have another surface right there. Okay, so you're kind of using your back leg as a counterweight, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's not too bad. And I it's don't have great balance. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't really want to introduce any fall risk while we're trying to decrease the low back risk. Right, okay. Yes. So ideally, if you're gonna do something like that, you have a hand on a surface, not a ball, but this is right here. And so if you're going down to lift something up, you can have a hand right there and it's much more stable. And so we're using that three points right here to get that as you're hinging forward. You can okay. also, if you're reaching for something just right here, is just tip forward with that leg. Again, making sure nobody's behind you so you don't kick them yeah. in the back. Lastly, number three, prolonged forward bending. Specifically with this, we're talking about forward bending that is sustained for longer than 30 seconds. To put it simply, the muscles of our spine get tired, then cranky. Then it's more prone to injury, compensation, and poor spinal loading patterns. You get it, not ideal. Prevention for this, limit spinal bending for sustained periods of time. Often this is with a work surface that is too low for that individual. As we are all wonderfully different, a set height will not work for everybody. Ideally, a work surface is engineered to the exact ergonomics of that individual and that task. Or it's pneumatic and raises and lowers. If these are not available options, there are a couple of workarounds. One is to add a third support. An example is a chest support, such as the kneeling creepers. Another might be bracing with a hand on the thigh or a surface. A second option is to try a footrest. 
So if you're working okay. right here and you're you're kind of like working on whatever, right? yeah. your spine is gonna be bent. But if I have a leg right here, it's actually difficult for me to bend forward like that. I tend to just wanna sink my hips back and work on stuff. Okay, so what like it's this. doing is rather than, you know, having your shoulders come forward and kind of hunch and keeping your bent, mm -hmm. it's encouraging you to hinge rather than to bend. Yeah. Keep these three principles in mind when evaluating tasks, looking at ergonomic changes, and investigating low back injury incidents. And of course, pay attention to strength. I can't help myself. Okay, awesome. So those are three easy ways to prevent back injuries, both at home and at work. Thank you so much, Chantel, for your help. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next time, we'll see you guys later.